Turn with me in your Bibles this evening, if you would, to the book of Matthew, chapter number 13. Matthew, chapter number 13. I'm trying to, on Tuesday evening, kind of close up guardrails. Felt like we had brought it to uh, to, a, to the conclusion that I wanted and didn't want to exhaust it. Over overexhausted. I'm glad for that. Um, guardrails are alive. I hope that you thought about that. I like need to be up. But I've been trying to draw our attention to evangelism. It's a somewhat evangelistic tonight, but it's uh, something that ministered to me in my personal life uh, as I looked at the Word of God to better understand it. I think that we need to do that. I, I believe that if we're going to be evangelistic to see our church grow, if we're going to see souls come in, it's going to take us knowing the Word of God. We're going to need to study it obviously from the pulpit to the Sunday school teachers, but to each one of us. If we're going to grow the church, um, grow the kingdom of God. What, what is the kingdom of God and, and what is it like? Uh, it's interesting, Jesus talks about that and knowing that we're part of the kingdom of God. In the book of Matthew here in verse number 13, uh, chapter number 13, I want to start reading verse number 24. Uh, I don't know what... The, topic of the breakup in your Bible is, but in my Bible it's the parable about the kingdom uh, at the top here. And uh, the Bible says, and another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up, and brought forth fruit. Then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder, uh, householder came and said unto him, Sir, did this not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence when hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. I'm just going to stop right there. Uh, it's interesting uh, how Jesus used parables. And uh, it's interesting when we look at the Old Testament, uh, we find that it's like the New Testament. However, there's not parables there. But there are terms that are used uh, like as principle that is used um, the kingdom of heaven is like as, uh, uh, you know, the Bible says uh, a, a mustard seed that when it's planted, it's going to grow. It talks about this generation being like little children. Uh, the kingdom of heaven, the Bible talks about Matthew being like eleven. Uh, the Bible talks about the kingdom of heaven being like a treasure that's hid in the field. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man a seeking goodly pearls. The kingdom of heaven is like a net. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who uh, 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 goes hires men to go out to his vineyard and work. Uh, a man uh, who, uh, who invites wedding guests to his son's wedding. Uh, the kingdom uh, uh, of heaven uh, is, is like several things the Word of God tells us. And, and uh, then we read about the, the, the kingdom of heaven being like the wise man who dug down deep and he found the foundation. The foolish man, he, he built upon the shifting sand or the dirt where there was no foundation. 
We look at God, uh, 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 the Bible speaks of Him, the God of glory being a, a devouring fire. God being like mighty men shouts. Uh, God is like a shepherd. He's like a man of war. Uh, the Word of God is like a hammer and a fire. Uh, God is like a lion and a bear. Uh, just a few as we look at the light principle, as we look at the Word of God. And so we're looking at tonight... The Bible says, Jesus speaking in this parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a man which sowed good seed in his field. But an enemy came in the field as well, and he sowed tares or bad seeds, weeds, things that, that weren't good. Uh, when we look at that, uh, Jesus uh, was, was giving us an important principle, and he was saying this, and I know this is very common to us, but he was saying this, it's the principle of sowing and reaping. It's a principle of what you sow is what you're going to reap. And so the kingdom of heaven is what we sow, but there is also that, that enemy that came in and put bad seed there and sow as well. So it gives us a lot to think about tonight as we think about that, that principle of sowing and reaping. But God, how's the enemy come into play? God, what are you speaking when you talk about the kingdom of heaven being like good seed planted, but now there's bad seed in the mix of the good seed? I understand, God, that there are principles of sowing and reaping, and uh, what, whatever seed you plant is whatever you're going to harvest. And uh, so when we look at that, I want us to realize tonight that everyone in here, you are something. Let me tell you what you are. You're a farmer. Did you know you're a farmer? Bree, did you know you're a farmer? I'm going to tell you tonight you are. Terry, did you know you're a farmer? You thought you were a mechanic. <laughs> What's that? Dad's a farmer. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're all farmers. Yes, Sister Jan, you're a farmer. We're all farmers tonight. Because that's the principle of the kingdom of God. And so we need to realize that whatever we're planning is that which we're going to reap. And uh, all too often, and may I say here tonight before we go any further, all too often the devil gets a lot of credit for things he doesn't do. A lot of times folks will say, well, the devil is against me. Yes, the enemy throws and tears, but a lot of times the reason why we reap what we reap is because it's the seeds that we've sown. And so if you want to reap differently than what you've been reaping, my encouragement to you is that you sow differently. You know, there are folks who uh, uh, have financial problems but it's related to undisciplined spending. There are people that have marital problems, and it's not the devil. It's because the, the husband and the wife, they don't honor one another. There are people that have relationship problems because, not because of the enemy, but because they never learned to bridle their tongue. And so there are relationship problems. There's a lot of things that because of that principle of sowing and reaping that we reap because of the things that we have sown. And the only thing that I can say to us tonight is if there are things that we are reaping in our life, it should challenge us that we should sow different seed. And so not everything tonight is because of the enemy. Sometimes we suffer a lot of heartache and a lot of problems in life because we sow the wrong seed. And God says that we, the, the kingdom of heaven, this principle is based upon, it is a sowing and it is a reaping seed. And the kingdom of heaven is what we sow, is what we are going to reap. And so if we want to reap a good harvest, we need to plant a good harvest. Do you know there are many people that will go to a concert tonight and they'll pay a lot of money to hear someone play the piano. Why? Because someone has sowed the seed of practicing and rehearsing and taking of their time. Do you know that there are some concerts tonight that will sell out to a violinist that, that the seats will be $1,200 to $1,500 then they'll sell out every seat? Do you know why? Because someone wants to go and listen to that violinist who took lots and lots of time to practice. 
In Branson, Missouri, there's, there's a gentleman, his name is Soji Tabuchi, with a name Hans. Well, you know, after he got done spelling his name and learning how to pronounce it, he started practicing the ballad or the fiddle, they're both the same. And uh, he has record-breaking crowds all the time because folks love to go and see Sobi Tabuchi because he can play the violin so well. But do you know what? He sowed the seed of practicing, so now he is reaping the harvest of his practicing. And so there takes a lot of discipline if we are going to reap good things in the kingdom of God. I want to say this, that oftentimes we'll ask God for something great, but it won't come in the same means that we want it to come in. Maybe most of you, I mean this, you may ask God for an old tree, and God may hand you an acorn that lies within the seed of that old tree. That's the principle of the kingdom of God. God, I want to be prayer, a prayer warrior. Do you know why? It starts with circumstances we don't like down on our knees. That's the seed. But if we will be faithful and we will plant, we will harvest a good crop. Some will say, Brother Seville, I really want to be used of God in my life. It doesn't come from behind the pulpit for strength. It may not come even in the way that we think, but it may come through troubles and conflicts that we really don't like. But that's the acorn that God gives us. That's the seed that God gives us that we need to plant for His kingdom. They say, well, this is I really want to know the Scriptures and I, I don't really have a lot of knowledge about them. Do you know what? It will take this one to get in the Word of God and read it. It will take this one to study it, to understand it. It all starts with the seed. But the principle of the kingdom is if we sow the seed, that is what we will harvest. No one can bypass the harvest. But the laws of harvest is this. They first must plant. I want to say this tonight as I, before I get farther. You know, my prayer has been God to send us souls. You know, we have a good church and we've seen God's presence move. I'm satisfied, but yet I'm not satisfied. I love the people of God. I love the family of God here. But you know what? If we want to see our church grow, if we want to see souls get saved, it's going to take folks praying. Those are the seeds we're going to have to sow. You know, it's beyond being faithful. We should be faithful. That should be a given. You know, it's going to take coming into God's house and expecting God to move. I want to ask you something. If you were a visitor and you were looking for a church to make your place of worship, a place where you could grow and grow your family in, and grow your faith in, would you want to come to a church where people just sat and really didn't seem like they had a desire to get more of God? I would. I would come into the church and yeah, I'd probably look around and I'd want, I want the church to look nice. I wouldn't want a building that's falling down. I'll just be honest, I wouldn't. I think it says something to the folks. I think we have a beautiful building. We'll take care of it. But I also think that when I come into church, I want to see some people who are praying. That when we sing, we're clapping, they're worshiping. Because they love God and they want more of God. And that's the folks that I want to grow with. And those are the seeds that we plant so that we can build the kingdom of God. And when we get to heaven, we can know that we've done our best to win souls. But we've also done our best to make a place for souls to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A place where the gifts of the Spirit are in operation. You know what? If I had a sick child, I want to take him to a church where I knew that there were some people who prayed and believed for God to move. If I knew that there were needs in my family, I want to go to a church where I knew people got a hold of God. So those are all the, the laws of sowing and, and, and reaping. I believe that as we sow those things, you know, I think that if we want to see the kingdom of God grow in miracle revival, it takes those seeds of us sowing. I say that tonight, I think we have a great church. I think there's always things that we need to work on. There's always things I need to work on. So what are we going to do to sow those seeds so that we can see the kingdom of God grow? 
that's the harvest I want to reap. If the Lord should tarry, or if the Lord does come, I'm going to reap that harvest. So, don't be despised by the damn small beginnings of things in your life. The seed. You know, it's that little seed. The, the mustard seed, the Bible says, is the smallest of the seeds. However, when it's planted, it grows. And that, 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 that mustard seed grows into a tree that the birds come and find a lodging place in. So the smallest, but it grows great things. In the book of Zechariah, chapter number 4, verse number 10, the Bible says, For who hath despised that they have small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of uh, Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro throughout all the earth. I want to say, don't be frustrated with the beginning of small seeds in your life, the beginning of little things. Uh, don't be uh, uh, discouraged by pediatric prayers, if you would. Because their prayers that grow up to be a dog prayer someday. Some folks may say, Brother Seville, I'm not very good at praying aloud in front of people. Do you know the best thing that you can do is keep on praying. And when you're called on to pray, just pray. Don't be, don't be ashamed. Amen. Pray from the heart. Pray that let the Holy Ghost touch you and fill you and use you. Amen. Those are the things that, that may be small, but, but God wants to move in. You may say, Brother Seville, it seems like right now in my life, my faith is mighty small, but we got to grow our faith. It takes that, that, that small measure of faith that we place in God and we plant that seed to grow bigger faith. No, you may say, I don't know. When it comes to the Word of God, I don't feel like I have a lot of wisdom. Take that small amount of wisdom that you've gained from God's Word and use it. Make it applicable for your life. Someone ask you for advice and the things of God. Put aside your human perspective and tell them what God's Word says. Give them that small amount of wisdom. Keep getting in the Word of God and growing that seed. Because the principle is, is what we plan is what we'll reap. See, the principles of harvest is there will always be tares. The Bible says here in Matthew 13, verse number 25, But while the men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, and he went away. Here, the fruit begins to spring up, and you can readily tell. It's amazing. We had, had a little fenced off area in our yard. I didn't do anything with it at the beginning of the year, but throughout the, 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 the winter months, it kind of became our compost pile. And we would throw things in there. So there was some tomato seeds in there. We had some pumpkins sitting out to the side of our house. And then the fall, I threw them in that place. But in the springtime, um, I think Sister Tina was by our house and she said, man, whatever's growing in your garden is growing good. It was nothing. It was weeds. And they were going crazy. <laughs> but it's interesting because we wanted to get some strawberry plants. And so I pulled all the weeds out, I cut, I trimmed, I pulled, I did everything I could do, dug up, plants some strawberry plants in there. It's pretty amazing. You know, those weeds are growing back up among the strawberry plants, even though it's been a while since I planted them. But you know what else was growing in there? There were all kinds of pumpkin plants growing. There were all kinds of tomatoes growing. But they could not grow for a while because the tears were there. Or I didn't notice them when I was pulling everything else up. And so, here it was that there is this unexpected dilemma that sets in in the middle of life. You know, we can sow good seeds, but the enemy against our soul is going to want to throw some bad seeds in there. He's going to try to trip us up and try to get us messed up. And uh, so, for every saint of God, there are going to be some seasons of some seeds that the enemy throws in our way that we're going to have to endure. I believe that comes in church building. You know, there's always going to be people that have their tongue wagging. Hopefully it's not in the church. That would be a real shame, wouldn't it? You know, there will always be people that like to come outside church. They're ungodly. What do we expect from them? The enemy's using them. They're not saved. They're, they're Satan's, uh, uh, if you would, puppets. And so there will always be some conflict. Uh, there's an enemy that, that's going to be against us. You know what? There can be some anxiety that can come in the middle of the enemy throwing in some, some uh, a bad seed. 
Charles Dickinson said this. He said, it was the best of times, but it was the worst of times. I've talked to some saints of God and they look back on their life and they said, it was the best of times, but it was the worst of times. They look back and in retrospect, even though it was so bad, they really see how that the seed of faith that they planted was growing. And so the enemy, he doesn't like for us to reap a great harvest that God wants to give us. So he comes in in the middle of the night and he throws in the tares. Amen. Uh, have any of you, uh, and I'm not talking tonight about bad choices. I've made enough bad choices in my life. Amen. And they don't have to be outright bad, bad sins, but sometimes I've spoke out of turn. Sometimes I've done the right thing, but at the wrong time. And it's got some things messed up. And so, you know, it, it's sowing uh, some bad seeds in the middle of good seeds. And, and I'm sure all of you can say, Brother Seville, I've done that. In the middle of all the good seeds that I've, I've, I've sown and trying to do something right for the Lord, I've made some bad choices too. I'm not talking about those bad choices. We will reap the, 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 the repercussions of our bad choices. But I, I, I need to tell you that the enemy tonight, amen, he likes to get in and he likes to slip things in and he likes to mess things up. But I want to tell you that the enemy can only do so much that the seeds that we plant, we will reap a harvest from them no matter what the enemy throws in our way. I'll get to, to a different point in a minute. How many of you have ever looked at the Old Testament and you looked at the children of Israel? We talk about them a lot uh, when we look at the Word of God because throughout the, 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 the Pentateuch, uh, you know, the Word of God, uh, David in the Psalms refers to them. Uh, we find Hebrews referring to them many times. The book of Acts, we, we find references back uh, to uh, these uh, children of Israel in Egypt. And you know, God could have bountifully worked out a way for the children of Israel to come miraculously out of Egypt. But the Bible says that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. What did that mean, Sister Janet? It means he got nasty. He showed his, his, his gnarly teeth and he growled, he bit. He did things that weren't so great. So here's the children of Israel. They're trying to serve God. They're trying to do what's right. And here is Pharaoh coming against them. But there came a day because of God hearing the cry of His people and their faithfulness that God delivered them out no matter what Pharaoh had done. I need to tell you that the Word of God says something good tonight. In Isaiah chapter number 54, verse number 17, the Bible says that no weapon formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment shall, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I need to tell you that no weapon tonight that is formed against you shall prosper. You can say, God, I'm trying to work for your kingdom. I'm trying to sow seeds of righteousness. It seems like, God, I'm trying to do what's right. But the enemy has thrown in some terrible seed that seemed to be growing up with all the good things that I planted. I want to tell you that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. No tongue that rises against you. Amen. It's going to be condemned, says the Lord. That's encouraging tonight. Knowing that in the kingdom of God, the enemy will fight against us. The enemy is going to throw some bad seed in among the good seed that we're sowing. But I want to encourage you tonight, don't let that discourage you. Amen. God has promised that He is going to give a harvest to the good seed. And there's coming a day that though the bad seed is growing up right there along beside of it, amen, the enemy, amen, his seed is going to be pulled up and it's going to be bound together and it is going to be burned. But that seed that we planted in righteousness and in godly living and doing that which the Word of God commands us to for the furtherance of God's kingdom, amen, it is going to stand firm in the harvest. And that is what God's looking for. Amen. Things happen in life. And the enemy tries to trip us up. Amen. But I want you to know something. Don't let fear overtake you. There's something that's called waterboarding. It's a technique that really 
and government officials as usually they do and use them against some terrorists. But don't take people and make them think that they're going to drop and man them up with their mouth and spill beans. They even do that to some of the secret services in their training. And they found that even the toughest of the toughest has only lasted, from what I understand, about 30 seconds. You see, the enemy wants to make us feel that way, like we're about to drown. Like there is no good that can come out of our harvest. I want to tell you something. That's a fear factor of the enemy. Put it under your feet. Know that when we plant seeds for righteousness, sometimes we, we witness to our families. It seems like the door shut in our face. It seems like we try to sow seeds of righteousness. It seems like there are things that pop up in life. God, how did this happen? You know, God allows the enemy to do some things, but I want you to know something. Though the enemy throws bad seeds in, there's still a principle of harvest. What you sow is what you're going to reap. What the enemy sows is what he's going to reap. The kingdom of God. See, sometimes we kind of are like those servants who came to the ruler and said, an enemy has done this. What will thou have us do? Should we go gather him up? And he said, no, don't do it. Because the damage may be that when you begin to pull those tears up, you'll begin to pull the wheat up and the good seeds. See, sometimes in life, we need to remember that we don't need any quick fixes in the middle of life. How many of you ever got a telephone call that changed your life, maybe your day? Visit. Maybe something sprung up. Sometimes we like quick fixes. Sometimes we open our mouth. Sometimes we respond. Sometimes those quick fixes get us in a lot of problems. Because those quick fixes wind up tearing the good seed. Sometimes we just need to let well enough alone. When the enemy comes against us, watch how you respond. When you're on the job, there'll be those folks who like to push your button. They will. Because the devil's working in them. And he's working against you. He'll do anything he can do to get your harvest to be messed up. How about when you're in a hurry, you get stuck behind that slow person or someone pulls out in front of you? You know, you have a spouse, you have kids, you got people with you that sees you. How do we respond? You know, a quick response can rip off the good seed. How do we respond when even another Christian is used of the devil? Sometimes they are. What did Jesus say to Peter? Saints can get down behind me. How do we respond? Because you see, a quick response, a quick fix, can rip up the good seed. So sometimes, and most always, Jesus was telling the disciples, He said, I want to tell you something. He said, it's not a quick fix. Sometimes you just got to let the good seed grow and let the bad seed grow aside. You know, it was interesting because when you read that Jesus gave this parable and He's given it to the multitude, as soon as the parable is over, in verse number 36, the Bible says that Jesus sent the multitude away. But the disciples came unto Him and said, Jesus, we want to know what this parable is all about. Would you open it up and would you reveal it to us? Do you know what? That is what Christ wants us as a church to be like. Amen. Not because I'm the pastor, whether it's me preaching, whether it's an evangelist or a missionary, or whether it's a Sunday school teacher. Amen. Our desire should be not to quickly turn it away, but our desire should be, God, teach me more. Take me deeper. Be willing. God, I want to know more about the subject. I want to know more about your word. Take me deeper. And that's exactly what Jesus was saying when he said, let, 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 let the tears grow up with it. Don't try to have a quick response and a quick fix. But be still and know that I am God. How often do we ever allow God just to be God? Be still and allow God to be God. We 
talk about the armor of God, we read about all the armor that we're to wear. And then in Ephesians 6, he says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, be still, and know that I am God. Amen. You know what the principles of the kingdom of God is? If we're planting good seeds, amen, and we want to reap a harvest, amen, in the season that God gives us, amen, stand still and know that He is God. Amen. In the middle of, amen, sometimes there may be a low crowd in church. Amen. I'm not going to preach any differently. I'm going to stand still and know that He's God. Amen. Even when my prayer hasn't been answered, when I prayed and I fasted and I've sought God and I've placed all the faith in the world in God and it doesn't come to fruition, you know what? I'm still going to stand and trust God. Don't respond quickly. Amen. It rips up the good seed. Amen. Well, I've invited folks to church and they don't come. Amen. Well, when I pour my heart and soul into an individual and I don't see a reward. Amen. Stand still and know that He's God. Keep trusting. Sometimes we respond too hastily. Wasn't Abraham a good man, a righteous man, a man who trusted God, a man who sought God in the direction of his life, a man who was willing to pull himself away from someone who didn't want to go God's way? But in a moment of haste, Hagar, hey go out with you. And Ishmael was born. How much good seed was ripped up when he thought he was taking up a bad seed? You know, really, I know God was merciful and our daughter and all become a part of God's plan. But look at Naomi and Elimelech in a time of famine. Man, we're out of here. It wasn't a good move. In a moment of haste, God calls us to faithfulness. God calls us to faithfulness even when there's famine. about Moses. Remember, he tried to be the deliverer that God wanted him to be in a moment of haste in the arm of the flesh. He killed an Egyptian. Then he goes and has to hang out for another four years. You no, know, a moment of haste ripped up a lot of good seed. Be still and know that I am God. God, teach me how to wait. Teach me how not to be troubled by the terrors that are growing by the good seed that's planted. That's a lesson to be learned. Sometimes we can get discouraged in the middle of our homes, maybe in all our place, even in the United States of America. Sometimes even our churches, because sometimes it seems like some seeds are growing that, God, well, you know what? Let's be faithful. Because there's coming a day when the Lord of the harvest will let us be accountable for the seeds that we've sown. Not what the enemy sown or anyone else, but what we've sown for the kingdom of God. And those real true seeds really are the kingdom of God. Jesus said it, there's no way of getting away from it. These are the seeds that we sow and we do things right, but not tears come up. Yes, that's the kingdom of God. That's what God's people is going to go through. The terror is going to grow there. But the responsibility is ours not to in haste rip up the terrors, but to make sure that the wheat is taken care of. But God will walk with us through all the inconveniences of a life. There are inconveniences, terrors. You know what? Be faithful. Be faithful. And the last thing I want to look at tonight is that the season belongs to God. In verse number 30, the Bible says, Let both grow together into harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you together, first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn, but gather the wheat into my barn. Listen, there's going to be tares with harvest. Listen, don't look for the quick fixes. Know that the harvest season belongs to God. 
See, both of the wheat and the tares were dependent upon something, and that was the season. There was coming a season. And at the right time, at the right place, they were going to be separated. God knows the seeds that you sow. Hey, listen. God knows your prayer closet you're praying in. God knows the faithfulness you have to His Word. God knows the faithfulness you have to holy living. God knows the faithfulness you have for ministry and desire to work. Keep holding to those things because there is coming a season where the tares will be gone and God is going to gather the wind together. Until then, don't let the tares choke you. Don't let the tares destroy your faith. Don't let the tares allow you to make bad choices. And don't let the tares annihilate your courage and give you fear. But know that I planted these seeds that are wheat for the kingdom of the harvest. And God, that is what I'm going to reap. Amen. Give it some time. There's coming a season where God will settle it all. You know how I said, sometimes we want to respond quickly and we want to speak things. And I've done that. I, you know, I, I can say that's, that's been a weakness at times in my life. But I hope that one thing the Lord has helped me, even with age and growing in His grace and His knowledge, that I learn that God will fight my battles because there's no weapon that is formed against me that will prosper. I want to tell you that it's only a little bit and the terrorist is going to be under my feet and the enemy is going to be under my feet. And God is going to see every seed that I've sown. And the harvest that I've sown is what I'm going to be accountable for. But if I try to tear the tares out on my own, there's going to be less in the harvest. If I don't plant good seeds, I'm not going to reap a good harvest. I've got to be faithful. Uh, you know what? There's coming a day when that person or the enemy who's attacked you, amen, they're going to be burned. That one's trying to hinder you, it's going to be burned. That one's trying to afflict you, it's going to be burned. That one's trying to discourage you, it's going to be burned. Because when we stand before God, it is only going to be the seeds that we have planted. What are we doing to plant the seeds in our life? What are we doing to plant the seeds in other people's lives? Amen. Those will be the harvest, amen, that we will have before God. The enemy fights against us. Some sicknesses are brought on because of the enemy. Don't let that sickness get you now. Death, that's the work of the enemy. There's coming a day where death will be done away with for the child of God. Don't let that discourage you. Listen, I know that we can look out there and we can see that there's a lot of churches that preach a social gospel that doesn't offend anybody or tell the truth. I, and I'm not out to offend people. That's not me. I don't want to be offensive. But the gospel is truth and I'm going to preach the truth. They say, but it's a good, but couldn't we get more folks if we listen? Those are the seeds that we are going to be accountable for. And will those seeds make it away from the fire? I don't want to do that. I want to plant seeds of righteousness. I don't want the enemy to come in and deceive. I want righteousness to be planted because that's the harvest I want to reap. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 18, we close with this. The Bible says, Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. I have pursued my enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were consumed. I have wounded them that were not able to rise. They are fallen under my feet. Amen. There's coming a day when the enemy will be under our feet the tares will be under our feet. Keep planting seeds of righteousness. Does anyone have a question, a comment, something you'd like to share tonight?
It'll pay off the discipline in our life. It'll pay off. Anything that is worth any value is because someone disciplined himself. It's a law of sowing. It's what we're going to reap. You may look corrupt and sometimes see tears. Don't look for a quick fix. Know that there's coming a day when the Lord will harvest. He's going to take all the seeds that we've sown. And He's going to harvest. Let's stand tonight. Maybe tonight God's just given you an acorn when you ask for an old tree. God's given you everything that you need to get the old tree. You want prayer? Be faithful and pray for the Lord of Lords. You want a knowledge of God's Word? Be faithful to reading the Word of God. You want an anointing? Be faithful to pray and allowing the Holy Ghost to move in you. God wants to do it. Don't despise the small, they have small things. And know that as your seed grows, that the enemy, no weapon that he's formed against you, will prosper. The day of harvest is coming. Would you bow your head? Ask the Lord to help you be faithful. Amen. So tonight.